I loved the cast. I loved Carrie's direction. It was um, Patrick's writing. It was so, so much about it. I thought uh, it came together in a really fun and creative way. How this happened was uh, uh, my the, the producer talked to me about doing a, a no, readapting a Norwegian show that was about a guy in a mental hospital that had all these delusions. And it was mainly pitched as something where we could like play with all these different film genres, you know, with any actor I wanted. And the first person I wanted to work with was Emma. So Emma and I uh, teamed up uh, one night and discussed it. I didn't have any idea what the story was going to be yet, any idea what a character was going to be yet. Just we were going to shoot this thing in New York where we live and, and make something cool. And then we both talked about getting Joan involved and then the three of us tried to figure out who the best writer was. We found Patrick and then just started doing it from there. I mean, she she is going through a lot. She's been through a lot of trauma and pain and uh, has a lot of She's been punishing herself for a very long time, and the idea of you know having these the series of three pills in a pharmaceutical trial that promises to fix that pain um, through all these different kind of hallucination dreams and all these different characters I also got to kind of experience. There was just a lot there. There was a lot to unpack, and um, and working with with these guys, it was a great opportunity to talk about all of that and explore that in a, in a deeper way. So Alex Tijolando is the production designer, and we spent a lot of time honing in the look on this thing. And you, it's, it was really a, a kind of a binary process of yes and no on imagery until we got to something that we both were happy with. What does it say about? The, I mean, the promise of at least my character's um, experiment uh, in, in happiness is that it's not so much about happiness; it's about, or it's more about determination of pain. Um, or, or the healing of the human mind or trauma um, and whether that's achievable or not through science or pills or pharmaceuticals um, and I don't want to give anything away but I think you know one of the takeaways is that um, uh, that it's it's really more a, a matter of uh, creating more space in your life for human connections than it is about uh, searching inside pill bottles for for things to make you happy the initial concept, the idea that we can get inside the heads of different people, we can build worlds based on imaginations, and we can, we can move characters around in those worlds, that was all very compelling. I mean, we had a different situation. We had Jonah and Emma. We wanted both of them to have that experience. Um, we had, Carrie and I had thoughts about um, building a, a, a regular world that was a little different than our world. And uh, we also wanted to protect the, the mentally ill community and, and not not find the humor of the show in mental illness in fact tell a compassionate story about mental illness so it was it was a wonderful conceptual jumping off point and then we kind of went went and made it our own yeah. he was actually one of the uh, I mean he was uh, he was the, the lines were all the same but he was sort of the least described in the scripts like so he was an ill-defined character and Carrie and Patrick had basically said, like, you can kind of, we can invent this from the ground up. So after a series of conversations, we sort of, you know, um, you know, I sort of pitched them what I thought was my take uh, on the character. Um, and in, he's arguably one of the more broken characters in the thing. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, Jonah and uh, Emma have, uh, you know, their fair share of uh, anguish. But he's, there, there was something, and he also kind of, you know, because he's not in the, the worlds that they go into, and he provides sort of a bit of a comic relief, you know, once you're back in the lab with him. So in that respect, it's really, um, I enjoyed playing him, you know, because, I mean, I think he's a grounded character uh, with huge mother issues and, and, and that kind of thing. But um, I just, I, I, I felt very sympathetic towards him in a weird way, you know. I can imagine that uh, for something like this, I mean, Netflix is a perfect platform in the sense that people can watch as much as they want or as little mm -hmm. as they want, but also you get this story told, whereas in maybe a feature film, you wouldn't be able to, you might have to cut corners or you might have to sacrifice some stuff, but yeah. in this, you get to tell the story. I think you'd have to, you'd lose some subtlety to, to try to squeeze it down. You'd lose, you'd lose the little pockets of all of our memories and histories that maybe aren't the most important stories of things that happened to us, but they're important stories of things that happened to us. We wanted to get as much of that as we could. I loved everything about it. I loved the first and foremost the writing. I, we got the scripts, and I thought they were uh, hilarious, like and touching and uh, and and deep. In the first couple, you read and you were kind of like, ah, where's this going? Um, and then as you progress you know, deeper into the read, you realize, oh, there's some actually some larger themes at play, and you know, it's it's not being weird for the sake of being weird, and um, and it was just fun. It was very, it was a it was a very fun read. And then once I started to get you know, sort of see what the the concept art was and the sets and the 
the location and sort of is this the future, is this the past, you know, sort of this weird retro future, sort of looks like the 80s or something. Um, and I just really enjoyed, um, I just, I, I thought it was just a bizarre world that I hadn't seen before, you know, so it just felt playful and hilarious. They're amazing actors. They, I mean, they could, they could do anything. And so it was a show that was posited on the idea of anything can happen and, and we had the best two people I can think of to do it. And is this a sort of series that you would like to contain as one series or would you, would you like to go back and explore more if you got the opportunity? It's always been conceived as a limited series, as a, as a one-time event and so right now we're just celebrating it, it coming out into the world. I mean it, it affords you the thing you can't do necessarily in film which is these really incredibly deep dives in a character you know and I think more than that it, it, it's a it, you know I think you know, especially at a place like Netflix and, and all the streaming services, you really get this, uh, the, the creators, the writers really get to do a deep, uh, they get to really expand on, on ideas, you know. Having written some screenplays myself, you know, usually they come in at about 120 pages and usually the studio is kind of going, like, can you get it to 118? You know, they want you to like crush it down. Um, and so to have the freedom for them to write, you know, 400 pages and, and really sort of touch all the walls in the room of character and plot and theme, um, and even pay attention to other characters that, you know, uh, I think it's really fun. You can take crazy departures in certain episodes, so it's, it's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys!